If you want to know how to configure standard access lists and the time it takes to eat a Snickers bar, you've come to the right place. Access lists in general are just a list of statements saying what is permitted and what is denied. So imagine that the access list is given to this guard who is guarding the inbound interface that connects your router to the internet. That guard is going to stand there and look at the list and look at the first line on there and say, okay, permit 10.1.5.1. So a packet comes in, he's going to say, is that you? The packet's going to say, no, I'm sorry, it's not. He goes, okay, well, how about number two? Deny 192, is, is, is this one you? And the packet, no, no, I'm actually sorry, I'm not. It's going to say, well, permit this whole network. Do, does your address start with 172.30? packet says, no, I'm sorry. You know, it keeps going through that list on and on and on and on. And if it's unlucky enough to reach the very bottom of that list, you hit the invisible implicit deny statement. You don't see it, but it's there, and it denies every tr bit of traffic that has not been permitted inside of that access list. Now, standard access lists are somewhat limited because you can only deny based on source IP address information. That allows me to say 10.1.5.1, you are permitted, or 192.168.153, you are denied. Now the question is, from what? Well, it depends on where you apply the access list. If you're using these for security, you're going to go to the interface and you're going to say, I'm going to apply it at this interface, either in the inbound or outbound direction. And oh, what a difference that makes. Inbound means it's coming into the router from that interface. Literally, put yourself in the role of the router. I am a router. Hold out your arm. There is my interface. It's coming in that interface. So if it's coming in, that means it came from the internet. Would these show up on the internet? Chances are no, they're private IP addresses. Outbound means it's going out of that interface. So when I apply this standard access list that you can see right here, uh, the direction really counts. Now the syntax itself. I'm going to open up a router prompt right here and we're going to say, okay, I, I need to configure a standard access list. I'll use a numbered access list. So I'm going to go into global configuration mode by typing configure terminal and I'll do access list and I'm going to choose a number between 1 through 99 because that designates a standard access list. So let's just use number 1. Now, one number can contain infinite, practically infinite, list of statements inside of it. So essentially think of this paper as the access list number. This is number one. And inside of that number one paper, there can be all kinds of statements. So let's add a few of them. I'm going to do permit. Let's do, uh, well, let's do that one that I see on the screen. 10.1.5.1. Okay, hit the up arrow. Permit uh, 192.168.1.53. Hit the up arrow. Permit, and you can see this is kind of list. Uh, 172.30.0.0. Okay, wait a sec. Slash 16. For that, we need a wildcard mask. What is a wildcard mask? Completely opposite of the subnet mask. So whenever you think of a subnet mask, just take your subnet mask, 255.255.0.0, which is what a slash 16 is, and subtract it from all 255s, right? That will leave you with 0.0.255.255. I know, it's weird. It's kind of wild. That's how it got its name. So I'm going to say 0.0.255.255, and the zeros really mean the 172.30 is what we're looking at, and I don't care what comes after that. That lines up to the 255s. Just remember it's the opposite of the subnet mask. So I'm permitting that, and you can use that rule no matter where it is. So on and on and on this list goes. Now let's do a quick uh, show access list. We've now got our first access list, and you can see it's creating this ordered list of statements, 10.1.5.1, 192.168.153, and then 172.30.0.0. Now we just have to apply it. So I'm going to say, I want to go to uh, interface faster than Ethernet 0 slash 0, and I'm going to say uh, IP access group. That's how you apply an access list. You say I IP access group. I want to apply that access list. Number one, you can see it, it's saying which number do you want and then which direction. That's the direction we want to say. Okay, so I want to apply that outbound. So as things leave my router, it's going to run through this access list. If it's not this, it's not this, or it's not this, it's going to be denied because at the bottom of that access list is the implicit deny. But wait, there's more. Numbered access lists are kind of old, like dial-up modems. So nowadays, most people prefer to use named access lists. So instead of typing in access list and a number, why not, just for the sake of it, type in IP access list and get a whole new set of commands. It says, okay, well, what kind of access do you want to create? I'm talking about standard access list right now, so I'll say standard access list uh, number or name. And I'll say, I want a name. Filter my stuff. Enter. Now I'm input in this access list configuration mode. The commands are the same, but now I've got a nice logical name to run by. So when I do a show access, I know what that's for. I can do uh, permit, you know, that same thing. 10.1.5.1, deny, 192, oop, 192, 168, 1.53, permit, 
.30.0.0, and so on and so on. You get the idea. You keep adding statements to that list. Now if I go back and do a show access list, I can see that I have one access list which is numbered and one access list is named. It's so much easier because 12 months down the road, you're going to do a show run. You'll be like, access list one, what on earth is that? I don't know. But if I see filter my stuff, that's a great logical description. I'm going to go, that's right, I was filtering some stuff. And when it's all said and done, those named access lists are applied in the same exact way the numbered ones are. I hope your Snickers bar was delicious and I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.